The latest trend the world over seems to be these mini PCs that you can pack anywhere, do anything, and not have to worry about a full-size desktop. And I'm totally here for it. I'm also here for a little bit more truth in advertising, though. Server room, this is the captain. Rhett, is there something going on down there I need to know about? Ah! We're on UPS backup, sir! The main paradigm couplers have come on a line! Uh, the tachyon router is uh, tangled with the secondary gazon In router. English, Mr. Rhett? It's the bandwidth, sir! Getting it down is not the problem, it's getting it back up! Well, do what you can, but remember, I've got a budget here. I'm gonna have to call you back. Hosting your own servers also means you get to host all your own problems. Even the most skilled chief engineers will tell you you should decentralize your network. So why not host your services with Linode? If it runs on Linux, it'll run on Linode. They offer shared CPU plans for as little as $5 per month and can scale as high as you need to go with dedicated CPUs, S3 compatible object storage, GPU hosting, NVMe block storage, and more. Linode is also expanding at light speed, with 12 new global data centers planned before the end of 2023. Visit linode.com slash craftcomputing and get a $100 60-day credit just for signing up for a new account. That's linode.com slash craftcomputing, and again, thanks to Linode for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Every few years, it seems, a new trend will catch fire, drawing in every venture capitalist firm, fledgling electronics maker, and marketing agency in the known universe to start pumping out cookie cutter products, all while claiming the ones they're making are of course unique and revolutionary to the industry as a whole. We've seen this with drones, action cameras, gimbals, dash cams, but rarely have the trendsetters ventured into the PC space. The last time that happened was Chromebooks. Over the last six months, though, my inbox has been flooded with review requests from mini PCs, and the supply of these only seems to be growing with each passing month. I've accepted a couple review samples from companies I've worked with in the past, like Minis Forum and Aerofara. But when it comes to reviewing basically identical components, just in a different shell by a different manufacturer, I want to see something unique to justify the amount of time that a review requires. If it wasn't obvious, I do want to briefly apologize to Zulu as they are going to be taking the brunt of the mini PC marketplace criticisms that I have, but I will be fully reviewing this PC as it sits today. With that, I bring you the latest revolution in mini PC hardware, Zulu and their self-proclaimed world's smallest Ryzen desktop in the XR1 Pro. You can tell it's unique because of the OLED screen on the front that displays the current time, current fan speed, and CPU temperature, all happening direct from the BIOS, so no Windows software tie-in required. We'll circle back to the claims of world's smallest very shortly, but I can go over Zulu's claims of what the system can do and what's inside. We're looking at a Ryzen 5 5600U mobile APU with six cores and 12 threads and Radeon RX Vega 7 graphics, 16 gigabytes of user expandable DDR4 memory running at 3200 MTS, a one terabyte M.2 NVMe drive, an Intel i225 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, and an Intel AX210 Wi-Fi 6E card for wireless connectivity. It's also got dual HDMI ports and enough USB to satiate nearly any appetite. Booting up the PC, I'm pleasantly surprised it includes Windows 11 Professional instead of Home Edition, and it comes pre-installed and activated. Though my review unit does seem to be a one-off image and kept asking me to complete sysprep at boot. Not surprising for an initial run of 50 review units though, according to their Kickstarter. Completely unrelated to the current conversation, if you're interested in learning how to create and deploy custom Windows images, make sure to check out my tutorial series, which I will have linked down in the video description. Speaking of the Kickstarter, it looks like you can choose from one of three Ryzen mobile APUs, though they don't go into specifics about exactly which models they'll be using. Based on price points, I'm going to assume the Ryzen 3 is a 5300U, with a 5600U for the Ryzen 5 model and 5800U for the 8-core Ryzen 7. All pretty standard when it comes to PCs like this. Interestingly enough, my exact configuration isn't available on their sale page, with 16GB and a 1TB NVMe drive. Instead, it looks like Zulu will be offering 16 gigs of memory and 512 gigs of storage as their only option for the Ryzen 5. Pricing on their Kickstarter seems to be very heavily slanted toward buy now and save before the price goes up. 
but I also don't see any possible way their quoted retail price ever moves a single unit. At $359, my Ryzen 5 review unit is fairly well priced when looking around at competing options, with similarly specced Ryzen 5600 UPCs selling for between $299 and $450. However, they claim the Ryzen 5 equipped XR1 Pro will have a retail price of $559, putting it not only far above any other similarly specced unit, but dangerously close to handheld gaming PCs and high-end laptops. See, while the Zulu XR1 Pro may be the world's smallest Ryzen desktop PC, it's not using desktop hardware, nor is it anywhere close to the world's smallest device using identical hardware. Almost exactly a year ago, I reviewed the Ion Neo Air, which was, and still is, one of the smallest and lightest gaming handhelds on the market, and it's powered by a Ryzen 5560U. If I can plug in a single USB-C cable and debunk your argument of world's smallest, all while including a 1080p OLED screen and full game controls, it's probably not an argument you should be making. Price-wise, the Ioneo Air is also available for $649 today, meaning if the XR1 Pro does make it to market at its proposed $559 retail price, there'd be practically no reason to spring for the mobile desktop cube over the ultralight handheld if you're going to be packing a monitor and keyboard along anyway. So why are many PCs like this being produced by any well-equipped electronics shop? Well, like the Intel Nook or the litany of single board computers on the market, they're small, cheap, and versatile. Zulu advertises the XR1 Pro for use in office, industry, gaming, education, programming, video editing, entertainment. You know, things you might need a PC for. The Ryzen 5 5600U is a fairly competent CPU with six cores based on the Zen 3 architecture and a boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz. Being a mobile APU also means it has the graphics horsepower to handle multimedia or even some light gaming use. In a previous video, I covered the 5600U in one of Mini's forum's latest Mini PCs, if you want to see how this chipset performs in some extended performance testing. But a quick summary would be, it's a beast of an emulation PC with enough GPU chops for eSports gaming or even 1080p low settings in some older AAA titles. As decent as the performance may be, let's bust a couple of the advertising claims from Zulu and other Mini PC makers just to help temper your expectations. Zulu says not everyone wants to be bothered setting up a big, complicated, and expensive tower desktop PC, alongside pictures of someone's hands inside of a desktop tower. While the 5600U is competent, it's still a laptop APU and is no replacement for a tower PC. It also doesn't offer the same expandability, just lower powered parts in a smaller form factor. The small form factor of the XR1 makes it easy to carry, allowing users to work on the go or take their computer with them wherever and whenever they'd like. Yes, but so can laptops, and you can find those equally equipped at nearly the same price points, too. Never in my life have I actually seen someone traveling with an Intel Nook or a mini PC, along with a monitor, keyboard, and mouse, instead of just buying a laptop. So please, stop with this as one of your marketing points. In fact, I'd rather you take another $30 off your retail price and ditch the included tote bag, especially since it can't hold a keyboard and mouse, which seem like important items to pack along with your portable desktop. Get your game on! Play top-tier AAA games on the XR1, like Red Dead Redemption 2, GTA 5, PUBG, Cyberpunk 27... Okay, I'm gonna stop you right the f*** there. The hardware inside here is roughly on par with the Steam Deck or the Ion Neo Air neither of which can average 30 FPS in Cyberpunk, even at 720p. So, let's go ahead and fire up Cyberpunk and put the loftiest claim on their website to the test. At 1080p, and with every setting manually turned to low, the game ekes out a whopping 12.1 frames per second on average, along with a low of 6.7. So frame rate, much cinematic. Wow. But let's give Zulu the benefit of the doubt and enable AMD FSR, with the latest version of Cyberpunk supporting FSR 2.1. Well, at least now it's a buttery smooth 16 frames per second on average, but the lows have also dropped off to just 5.6. An improvement overall, but far from our target of even 30 FPS in the FSR settings menu. Finally, let's go for broke and turn the resolution down to 720p, something I've tested this exact CPU and APU combination with before. And despite the 30 watt TDP inside the desktop, the result is nearly identical to results from handhelds, a measly 25.2 FPS on average with 1% lows approaching single digits at 8.8. .8. 
by no stretch of the imagination is this game remotely playable, and I'm really tired of both handheld and mini PC makers trying to make the claim otherwise. It's one thing to claim your PC can be used for video editing when GoPro footage is your source material. You can say it plays games so long it can run Stardew Valley or Minecraft at 30 FPS. But stop with these runs the latest AAA games like Cyberpunk and Red Dead Redemption when that claim is so easily proven false. Look, I have been a longtime fan of mini PCs, owning Intel Nooks going back to the original Celeron and Sandy Bridge i3 models, and purchasing literally thousands of them for industry and user workstations. But I also understand their limits. For the average desktop user, a Ryzen 5 5600U has more than enough power for day-to-day -day tasks, and still is powerful enough for some multimedia work, or even gaming, so long as your expectations for that are not too high. The Zulu XR1 Pro, as equipped with the Ryzen 5 5600U 6-core APU, Radeon RX Vega 7 graphics, 16GB of DDR4, a 512GB NVMe drive, 2.5 gigabit networking, and Wi-Fi 6E will run you $359 on Zulu's Kickstarter. And for that price, I actually do think it's a solid offering, so long as you don't expect it to live up to everything in their lofting advertising material. I don't, however, recommend this as the ultimate backpack companion, because laptops are a thing. I don't think you should buy this expecting to play the latest AAA games, but emulators, esports titles, or games from between five and eight years ago will likely do just fine. I also don't think it'll ever sell for the claimed MSRP of $559, as that would basically be product suicide. What it is, is a very solidly constructed mini PC with an all-aluminum enclosure, a clever addition of an OLED screen, plentiful I.O. and expansion, all for a reasonable price. And I wish Zulu, along with every other mini PC maker, would start advertising them as such. If you're interested in the Zulu XR1 Pro, I will have links to their Kickstarter and their website down in the video description. Although again, make sure to temper your expectations accordingly. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on the social medias at Craft Computing. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, the best way to do that is head on over to craftcomputing.store, pick yourself up a pint glass or a bottle opener, and start drinking like a pro. That's going to do for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. for today is a limited release from Deschutes Brewing over in Bend, Oregon. It is the Twilight. Uh, I believe this is a pale ale, although they don't really say. Summer ale. There we go. Bask in the last light of this crisp and easy drinking summer ale. Where are you enjoying your Twilight? Uh, 38 IBU and 5%. Make sure you're getting the most out of your beer by ordering one of our nucleated craft computing pint glasses as well. So this is the Deschutes Twilight Summer Ale. I gotta say, it's much more malty than I expected. Uh, it's like, it's almost like a Pilsner and a Red Ale had a baby. Uh, it's very crisp, very refreshing, but it's, it's surprisingly full-bodied at only 5%. But that malty flavor doesn't keep it from being refreshing. It's definitely a good beer. It's not quite what I expected, but that's also not a bad thing. Cheers.